from Arlington National Cemetery to the Marine Corps Memorial to the Smithsonian American History Museum, now to Independence Avenue. Part 3 begins now. Welcome everyone. Zach the Incredible Impression here again in Washington, D.C. Right now we're going to check out one of the newer memorials that has recently been erected. I'm talking about the Dwight D. Eisenhower Memorial. Let's go check it out, shall we? I'm going to start off with this display over here. The tide has turned. The free men of the world are marching together to victory. This was part of his D-Day address to the troops on June 6th, 1944. You can see the troops there. And then General Dwight D. Eisenhower briefing them. And then we move on over here. This is from his second inaugural address on January 21st, 1957. We look upon the shaken earth and we declare our firm and fixed purpose, the building of a peace with justice in a world where moral law prevails. And there you can see now President Dwight D. Eisenhower. Some of his cabinet or men behind him. It's just amazing that a man like him had such a great ability to see such incredible things in the future for our country. And he went from being a general in the military to our 34th president of the United States. The commander in chief, Dwight David Eisenhower. As a kid, I've always admired Ike. He was one of my favorite U.S. presidents, and as I grew up and learned more and more about him, the more interested I became in him and his history. So it's really nice to be able to come here and see the memorial to him. As I said, this one is fairly new. I, I believe it was maybe just a year or two ago, maybe three, that it was dedicated, but it's great to finally be here in the nation's capital and seeing all these great sights. We're gonna go now across the street to the Air and Space Museum, also part of the Smithsonian Institute. But first, let's take a sit-down break. Been walking all day long. My back is compressed, it really, really hurts. So I'm gonna rest up here for a few minutes and then head into the Air and Space Museum. A lot of walking, but man, I love DC. I have made it into the National Air and Space Museum and I tried to walk in at first and then I found out that admission is free, but you have to reserve a ticket online. So I turned around, went out the door and <laughs> went back, sat down on the curb and or on the steps in front of the museum and reserved a ticket. <laughs> And as I walked in, I noticed this. This is the original Enterprise from the original Star Trek program. My gosh. That is awesome.
That is amazing. Captain Kirk, William Shatner, who is now an astronaut himself. How about that? Mainly all of the planes you see today, for example, the Boeing 747, the McDonnell Douglas DC-10, Airbus A300, and Lockheed L-1011 TriStar are all powered by Rolls-Royce. And they said Rolls-Royce was expensive to travel in. <laughs> in a manner of speaking. Now entering the Destination Moon exhibit. Space toys. Very nice. <laughs> well, I guess in space you gotta have something to do, right? <laughs> Oh wow, looky here. The Gemini. And they do have it over here. They have the Apollo 11 command module. This is the ship that returned from the moon with Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins. Now, when they would get in the ship, they would actually be in a laying position. And then once the ship, ship lifted off, and got into orbit, they would be sitting. And now, you can kind of see inside the cockpit of all the controls and little switches and gadgets. It's very small in there, so if you were claustrophobic back then and wanted to be an astronaut and go to the moon, well, <laughs> you had better had overcome your phobia fast. But I'm sure NASA would have worked with you on that. <laughs> and then, when they came back to Earth, this is the heat shield. The heat shield's right here. This is what protected the ship upon re-entry to the Earth's atmosphere. That's what they were concerned about in Apollo 13, that the ship's heat shield might have been cracked due to the explosion. And how cool is this? A piece of American space history. This is Neil Armstrong's space suit, which he wore on the moon. I hear the Beatles. Okay, race cars. Harry, follow Daddy on. Wow. All right, guys, they just announced that the museum is closing in 15 minutes. It's 
so unfortunately we're gonna have to head out early today I do apologize for this but I didn't even realize it was so late in the day Oh my gosh, are you serious? Really, they have the fighter from Star Wars. Well, what a great way to end this part of the vlog. <laughs> That's awesome. We are outside the Jefferson Memorial. If you look across the way, you can see the Washington Monument. Let's go on inside and see Mr. Jefferson our third president. You know, I just noticed something. If you look directly across from the Jefferson Memorial, you can see the White House. That's where the most powerful man in the free world lives. That's right, folks, Eddie Murphy. <laughs> However, off to the left is an area called the West Wing where the president and his offices are but I think since 2021 I think they're transforming it into a geriatrics clinic <laughs> just kidding well let's go pick up where we left off the Jefferson Memorial here we go Thomas Jefferson, the third president of the United States. Hello, Mr. Jefferson, principal author of the Declaration of Independence. Mainly, I just wanted to come in here and show the statue in the surrounding areas. Here's a part of the Declaration of Independence. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. Among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Almighty God hath created the mind free all attempts to influence it by temporal punishments or burdens. Our departure from the plan of the holy author of our religion. Thomas Jefferson. All right, guys. Well, that does it for today. We've had a long, rich, full day together. I'm really glad that you guys could join with me today on this fun adventure to our nation's capital. And there are some other uh, memorials that I wanted to go to, but just could not because of losing daylight. And, you know, I'm not fluent with how DC is at nighttime. So I got to get back towards Lancaster, back to the hotel. And I will see you guys in the next one. Oh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Hit the bell notification so you'll know when more incredible videos are uploaded. Also, find me on Facebook, Zach Arnold, and Instagram, FabZachForever. Thanks again for joining me, guys. I will see you later. Vlog over.